Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to show you how I made these four cards using some sheet load leftovers. I hope you'll stick around and find out more. Thank you so much for stopping by. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. So every month after I make a sheet load of cards, I am usually left with some leftovers or scraps and a majority of the time they either get recycled or they sit on my desk in a pile. I decided this month that I would see what I could do with those leftovers and share it with you here on YouTube. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see it as a monthly series, let me know in the comment section below. So here are the six cards that I created this month. I will link the process video below and I will also have the video linked where you can find out how to download the printable for yourself. After making those, I was left with some of the white cardstock, some of the pattern paper, and then some of the metallic paper that I used as mats. And if you look at the cutting guide, you'll see here the leftover paper that now I have to work with. I might have to add another piece of white cardstock as we go along, and of course I'll need to get out more card bases, but I have both of those things aplenty, so no big deal if I need to get some more out. Once I start the process video, I will go to a voiceover, so if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! The first cards that I'm going to make today are going to follow the sketch from this month's sheet load of cards. I figured out off camera that I could make two of those layouts using that metallic gold paper I had left. So what I did was I just cut down some pattern paper scraps to complete those two cards. You may notice here that when my strip gets too small for me to hold with my fingers, I did use a little piece of scotch blue removable tape to hold that in place while I cut it. In my original process video for this month, I didn't use the triple banner punch to punch the actual pattern paper pieces. I used it as more of a template. So today I do want to use that. So I cut each of those strips a quarter of an inch taller than what the diagram calls for. I did post a video the other day where a subscriber shared a nice easy tip to punch both of the mat and the pattern paper piece at one time so it all looked really nice. I will link that video in the description box below. Once I had all of the pieces cut, I did start with the assembly of the cards. I again just followed the sketch from this month. And the white cardstock pieces you saw there, I will eventually use those to do my stamping. And right here you'll see me cutting that mat by hand with scissors. That is what my video from the other day is going to help you avoid. While I work on adhering these pieces to the card, I wanted to let you know that if you want to play along with this leftovers challenge, I would love that. If you post a video here on YouTube or on Instagram, please use the hashtag, hashtag sheetloadleftovers. For my stamping today, I will be using a sentiment set from Momenta, and I will be using these two girl images from this illustrated faith set. I got both of these at Hobby Lobby probably last year on sale. I'll be stamping these in Versamark ink and then heat embossing them with gold detail embossing powder. When placing my stamps, I tried to keep them as low as possible. I knew that I was gonna have to cut some height off of this. So I got the sentiment and the girl stamp ready to go. And because these are new stamps, I did use my fingers on those just to take off that coating so it would hopefully take the ink better. I did use my embossing buddy on my fishtail banner before I stamped just to ensure that the powder does not stick to where I don't want it to. I just love how the gold embossing on this ties in the gold mats on each of the fishtail banners. 
I got out my little Fiskars photo trimmer and I cut the excess white off the top, but this fishtail was still too tall. So I got back out my triple banner punch and I just punched that again and that worked perfectly. So I just did this with both and then these two girls got adhered to the front of my cards with these pop dots. Now these pop dots are new to me. These come from the Dollar Tree and for a dollar you get two sheets that you see here. I will say that they work nicely, they hold well, but I think I would use these in the future for smaller pieces because it took quite a time to get everything on there and then pull the release paper. You'll notice on the second card that I placed the sentiment or the focal point in a different orientation. I just thought it looked better um, versus that first one. The first one was still a little too long for me, but that's the great thing about sheet load. You can always make it your own. For my third card, I got out a couple scraps of the pattern paper, and then I got out this new to me stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh called Simple Greetings Courage. I just love the sayings in this, and it was a pretty good price too. I'll link it below if you want to check it out. And then finally, I got out a card base and a scrap of vellum. My first piece of pattern paper was already at the correct width of three and a half inches, so I cut that down to four and three quarters inches tall. Next, I cut that black pattern paper so it made just a small border around the first piece. It ended up being three and three quarters inches wide by five inches tall. For the sentiment on this card, I will be using the Your Courage Inspires Me sentiment from the set, and I just put it toward the bottom of that vellum strip, just kind of centered left to right. I am going to be heat embossing this like I mentioned, and to avoid like warping the vellum too much or even melting it, I made sure to heat up my heat gun off to the side for probably 20 seconds before I brought it to the vellum, and then I try to get it set as quickly as possible, and it turned out pretty good. Next I brought back in that little guillotine trimmer again and I just cut it so there was a nice border on the top and bottom of the piece of vellum. Now it's time to start assembling this card. The first thing I did was adhere my piece of black pattern paper just flat down onto that card base. And then before I can adhere down my white pattern paper, I need to get my sentiment adhered onto it. I did leave extra vellum on the left and right of my vellum strip so that I could adhere this on the back. That way you're not seeing the adhesive on the front of the card. I decided that the card needed a little something extra, so before I adhere the white piece of pattern paper to the card front, I got out this little flag punch that I've had in my stash forever and hardly use. These little banners were inspired by Christy Marcotte here on YouTube. She does this often. If you've watched her videos, you've probably seen where she adds just these cute little flags just on her card layouts. So I punched two of those out, got them arranged at the top of my white piece of pattern paper. Once I had those where I want them, I just cut off the excess and then that got adhered to my card. If you've been watching me very long, you know that each one of my cards usually needs some sort of bling. I got out these black gems and I just added three to my card front. For my fourth and final card today, I'm going to be using the scraps that are left along with this honeycomb embossing folder from Cuddlebug and a white card base. My first step is going to be to emboss the front of this card. You'll notice here that I took some time to align it up so the honeycombs aligned with the fold, and then I used a piece of scotch blue removable tape to hold it in place while I ran it through my cuddle bug. Now I did not run this all the way through. You'll notice I just rolled it in far enough to where it would emboss the card front. 
I'm going to be using the scrappy strip technique for this final card and I cut this scrap of white cardstock to two and a quarter inches tall by five and a half inches wide. This will just end up being the base for all of my little scrappy strips. I want my little scrappy strip to have a small black border, so I cut a half an inch off both sides of this black pattern paper. I did want to preserve the middle of this pattern because I will be using it as some of my scrappy strips later. While I still had my big trimmer out, I cut down each of the pattern papers that I wanted to use to three inch tall strips. I just thought this would help with the next step in the process. Off camera, I ran my white cardstock strip through my Xyron machine so I had one side that was just full of adhesive. Now I'm going to start making my strips. All I do is just kind of rotate or turn each of my pattern papers in my trimmer just to get pieces that are kind of triangular in shape and that are different widths. Now you might have noticed that I removed the guard from my Fiskars trimmer. I would not recommend this. It is not the safest thing to do. I did make sure that I was super careful, but again, I wouldn't try this at home. I did make sure to replace that right away so this trimmer would be ready to go next time I used it and I would not chop off any of my fingers. Once all of those were cut, it was time to start assembling my scrappy strip. I did try to lay out the pattern papers in an order that I thought they would look nice. And you'll notice that the very first piece I placed, I did make sure that the edge was right up flush against the edge of my cardstock strip. I will go ahead and place these down until I have it filled up. And then that excess will just be cut off with some scissors. Once that was all ready to go, I then added my black border with those two pattern paper strips and I tried to adhere it so only the black part would show and none of the white dots on the pattern paper. Off camera, I used this MFT die set to cut a gold frame for my sentiment. I will be stamping that and heat embossing it on this piece of vellum. And for this card, I'm using the Get Well Soon sentiment. I do have someone specifically in mind to send this to. Just like with the first time I embossed on vellum, I'm gonna use my embossing buddy and the Versamark ink with the gold detail embossing powder. I did have a little stray powder around my sentiment, so I just got out a brush and I dusted that off before I got out my heat gun. Once that was all set, I got out my art glitter glue and put some adhesive on the back of my gold frame. I placed that around my sentiment where I thought it looked nice, and then I set this aside for about five minutes to dry well. Some of that five minutes was spent adhering my scrappy strip to my card front. But once that was dry, I cut the excess vellum off with some fine tip scissors here. And then I got back out that art glitter glue to adhere the sentiment onto my card front. I wanted to place it so you could still see some of the scrappy strip behind the sentiment. Again, I let this dry for about five minutes. My final step was to add some bling. So I got out my Couture Creations gold pearls and added three of those to the card front. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made my card today using some sheet load leftovers. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.